Let me welcome Yolanda Kakabatze. She used to be a member of government in Ecuador, Minister for the Environment, for a while. And let me also welcome once again President Bieger on the panel. We'll just take a few minutes to try and establish some kind of feedback loop or feedback cycle in light of what has been said and with a view to what's going to be said uh, later on in the morning. Yolanda Kakabatze will address the audience immediately after the first break. And I understand you will then be talking about your present job for the World Wide Fund of Nature. That is its current name, the World Wide Fund of Nature, which That's used right. to be the World Wildlife Fund. That's right. Yolanda, if I may, first question. Um, you just listened to a member of a European government. Are governments mostly friend or foe <laughs> for the worldwide fund of nature? Friends. Definitely <laughs> friends. And, and that is because it um, doesn't matter where you are sitting, in civil society organization, or in the government, or in the private sector, uh, or in the church or media, you cannot do it alone. You have to work with the other sectors. And in the case of WWF, uh, governments are the ones that set policies. Public policy is absolutely not only relevant, but a complement to whatever action is taking place within society, in any country, in any government. And, and uh, the, the need or the importance of joining forces between policy and action is um, one of the most important responses to sustainability. Uh, Thomas Bigo, you're the president of a university, not of an NGO, of a university. Um, same question, once again, if you had to corroborate the claim that the University of St. Gallen too is a pioneer when it comes to sustainable action, what will, or sustainable action, activities in the field of sustainability, what would be your best claim to support, what would be your best argument to support the claim that St. Gallen too is a pioneer? I think we were the first to really introduce integrated approaches in teaching and uh, research. Uh, that was even before systemic views came up in uh, other sciences. And I think that's also very much based in the history of the University of St. Gallen. Was it was founded as a trade school some uh, 112 years ago. And at that time, to do business in the, at that time, global world, you needed to understand different cultures. You could not rely that somebody understands your contract when you're offering uh, a, a new business relation. You had to understand techniques. In the old university building downtown, there was even a chemistry laboratory. So the uh, neighbors complained about the smell which came up after the lessons. Uh, and and uh, I think that's, that's uh, something that's unique. Uh, our university also does not emphasize so much faculties, faculty for law, political science. We rather try to integrate, as I mentioned it before, all what you can see as a broader social science approach. Uh, maybe another, another element is also the uh, engagement of students, the next generation. The University of St. Gallen has more than 100 student associations. They always pioneered when it came up to take up uh, new, new, new challenges, like, for, for example, sustainability, responsibility. Also, the uh, initiative to found new research institutes was supported by the Students' Association. I think this, this would be the two most important elements. If I may just follow up on that and look at business schools in terms of a generic uh, collective, business schools in Switzerland, in Europe, what can business schools do uh, is there anything that, that any initiative, any, any field where they can really contribute towards um, either awareness, research, what can business schools do? 
I think it's, it's uh, three elements. Uh, if you want to help the next generation or the graduates, the customers of our executive programs in general to, to uh, act in a more sustainable and responsible manner, then these people need to reflect their own values. It has been mentioned several times, sustainability is, 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 is not just a program, it's an attitude. And uh, we, we can't teach values in, in universities, but we can help to reflect the own values. The second is you have to understand the different environments, cultural, social, economic environments, natural environments. And the third is you have to help them to lead to actions. And uh, what I see uh, in, among the, the leading business schools of the world is that there is a move towards a more comprehensive general education. Also there, the University of St. Gallen can be considered as a pioneer, but more and more universities are reintroducing a general syllabus with uh, humanities, social science, and we also see more and more elements in all the programs uh, which are linked to social projects. Uh, we, for example, in, in one of the programs, uh, we, we, uh, uh, we, we have students who go out to emerging markets, help to bring light in, 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 uh, in, in houses, in poor houses. So I think this, these are the three elements. And there is also a lot of innovation going on and a lot of conferences among deans to exchange the experiences on this. Well, thank you. Yolanda, uh, you will be addressing your activities at the fund later on. You, all, you hail from Ecuador. That's right. So you look at these issues not just you know, through your functional eyes, so to speak, but you look through all these issues also from a Latin American perspective. You're now here in Switzerland, in Europe. If you look at European governments in general, um, what do you see? Do you see pioneers over here in Europe? Or do you see more rhetoric than, than concrete action? What is your perception of what's going on in Europe? Well, one of the advantages that I have is that WWF is mainly a European-based organization. The largest uh, organizations of WWF are in Europe. So the voice and the voices that we hear um, are very strong voices from Europe, but very strong in, um, in messages that are directly related to sustainability. The need to think about how to measure growth. Is GDP the right, the correct way of, of dealing with growth and, and development? Do we measure country by the amount of uh, barrels of oil or tons of soy or um, beef production? Or do we measure growth by, by other social um, indicators? And those voices did not start in Latin America or in Africa or in Asia. They started in Europe. And, and that's highly relevant because it gives you a message that the European citizen, as well as the decision maker, is talking and thinking globally. We have just heard uh, the federal councillor refer to these global problems from Switzerland. And, and she's absolutely right when she prioritizes, for example, food waste. Uh, who decided on um, expiration dates? <laughs> I'm sure the Federal Council knows that, as well as all of us, that governments play a tremendous role because that fi fiction of um, setting a date comes from the most um, absurd thinking of um, the evolution of the human being, the evolution of society, and the evolution of food also. Mm -hmm. and, and that is one of the main causes of, of waste. So uh, the, the north-south uh, integration of thought, a combination of goals, is present everywhere, in every single country, and uh, thanks to Europe for, for being a driver in that inspiration.
Well, thanks for commanding Europe in that <laughs> regard. Uh, you mentioned you know, that measuring progress just along the lines of a GDP may not make much sense in the future. Among the many new initiatives, among the many ideas and projects in terms of measuring progress in a different way, is there anyone that stands out in your perception, like social progress index or any one of those more recent happiness. measures? <laughs> happiness. <laughs> happiness. <laughs> Do you subscribe to those, um, to those initiatives, anyone in, in particular? Or are you, you, are you going to like, wait and see? No, no, no. I think that um, most of the countries around the world are working on social indicators mm -hmm. to, to define growth. And, and we have seen changes. Well, Latin America is a region that is demonstrating that the investment in, in uh, uh, social needs is, is the way to, uh, to grow to grow and to become relevant also as a, as a player. Um, and uh, the, the investment on education and health is definitely there. And I think that happiness comes with that, more than with material goods. <laughs> All right. I understand the time is up. Last question to both of you. Uh, Federal Council Lothar said, be a pain to <laughs> the younger generations in here. Um, President Bigger, as a rector of university, would you subscribe to that? Uh, be a pain? Uh, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> be a productive pain. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I think it, it applies also to our institutions. If we want to feel a pressure, for example, for innovation in teaching, it has to come from students. Where else can it come from? And, uh, uh, I, I think it's uh, also, uh, for this generation, easier to be painful because you can compare. In our times, we were very much in national systems, which were very regula regulated, but uh, our students, the generation of today, the they can travel, they can compare systems, they have all the information available, and so I think it's, uh, it should be easier to be to be a productive pain. Yolanda? Definitely be a pain. Mm, and, and I think that today, in, in the 21st century, um, students and youth in general are having their hands tools that we don't, starting with this. Mm -hmm. I have to learn how to <laughs> use this. They, are born with the intelligence in their fingers in addition to their minds. So the capacity to use new tools for influencing policy, for communicating, for being a pain, are so different and so valuable that we, our generation, should foster and provide all the facilities for that to happen. So we just triggered a new 1968 kind of wave. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. yes. I'm looking to the master of ceremonies. Break until when? Uh, there is a break until 9.20. Thank you all very much for your attention. Thank 10 you 20? very much. 10.20. Uh, 10.20. 10 yeah, 10 Thank, <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So long. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.